This is the Nebraska Greats, a weekly podcast as a service to the Nebraska Greats Foundation, which serves former collegiate athletes facing medical needs and financial challenges. Your tax-deductible contribution will change the life of a former college sports hero. Please give online at negreats.org. And now, here's your host... Ross Jernstrom. Hi again, everyone. I'm Ross Jernstrom, former sportscaster at WWT Channel 6 and also at KTV Channel 7. You are listening to the Nebraska Greats, a podcast produced by the Nebraska Greats Foundation, which serves collegiate athletes facing a medical need and a financial challenge. Learn more or give generously at www.negreats.com. Dot org. Well, this is a special day. We're talking about college baseball, and we've got a special guest with us today. My guest is a former Husker All-American, Jeff Lisey, who played college baseball at Nebraska from 2000 to 2003 and set several records. Jeff, welcome to the program. Yeah, it's great to be on. I, you know, got to start with saying Nebraska Greats Foundation is a, is a great foundation. Love what they're doing. And um, anybody listening, obviously, it's a it's a good organization, something to be a part of. Well, Jeff, let's go back and look back at your career. Uh, you went to high school at Creighton Prep, and uh, that kind of prepared you for uh, your career at Nebraska. Tell me about uh, how the Junior Jays helped you get to Nebraska. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember going into prep just hoping I'd make the teams there, you know, and like I, I was always a small guy. Like it's not like I was some – freak athlete that you know that was was destined to be a college or professional player and, and like I said I was as a freshman at prep hoping to make the teams there and I um, was able to play football and baseball at prep and, and had a great experience there and and uh, I mean I feel like I had really good coaches really good friends really good support staff and everything else around me and uh, it, it was it was a great experience at, at Creighton Prep and definitely something that helped prepare me for Nebraska. Well, you made a breakthrough in 2001, your sophomore season. Uh, tell me just how you broke into the lineup and uh, what the competition was like at Nebraska under Coach Dave Van Horn. Yeah, so so I appreciate you just kind of skipping past my freshman year because that was uh, that was not so memorable for me. <laughs> the, team, the team had a great team my freshman year, but I, I was not so great. But uh, yeah, I think you know, I think anytime you come to college, it's a new level of play, new level of expectation. And, and uh, I, I was probably overwhelmed a little bit my freshman year, but I really set it in my mind between my freshman year and sophomore year, kind of that summer, that's like, I, I got to work for this and, and prove that I belong. And, and I think that was for me when a lot of the transformations started to happen. I got a lot of at bats in summer ball and was playing for the, the Beatrice Bruins, who were in the Mink League at the time. Um, and really, like I said, just just really committed and dove in uh, with with hitting and and defense and that kind of stuff. But then also in the weight room and and uh, just really committed myself. And I remember the fall of my sophomore year. I had a good fall, and telling one of my friends, I'm like, I don't know if I'm even going to play. You know, we had we had uh, John Cole and Adam Stern who were uh, juniors there a year ahead of me, and they ended up being third and, and fifth round draft picks that year. So they, they were pretty much penciled into the outfield. Um, and then Justin Seeley had a really good fall. Um, like mm-hmm. I said, I had a good fall. Like there were, there were four or five outfielders that were in the mix. And I'm like, gosh, I don't, I don't know that I can do any more than I'm doing. And, and I still may not play. And that team was, that team was loaded in 01. And uh, fortunately I was able to play. I was able to, to perform well. And, and uh, I mean, like I said, we had, had a really good team in 01. Yeah, in 01, uh, you batted 380. You're the most valuable player of the NCAA regional. That team, 50 and 16, and uh, you really kind of launched this team into the College World Series, uh, the first Nebraska team ever in history to make it to Rosenblatt Stadium. Uh, what was so special about that team? I think we were, we were gritty. We were tough. Uh, kind of took on, you know, the personality of Coach Van Horn and, uh, you know, almost played with a chip on our shoulder. And, and you know, even going into that year, probably not a lot of respect. Our team's not thinking we were that great. And, and you know, early in the season, struggled a little bit. But 
that team had a lot of talent. We could pitch. Uh, there were a lot of guys that could really run. Uh, some guys in the middle lineup that could really hit and, and just a really, really balanced team. We could do it all. And I, I've always told people that Oh one team was really, really good. And if I think if we would have won a game in the Codwood series, we, we could have kind of settled, settled in and, and uh, done some damage, but you know, we lost two really close games um, almost, I don't want to say starstruck, but like, you know, I mean, you have all the hoopla and all the fans, and and it was it, it was crazy, and and like I said, it, we played against a couple of good teams and got beat, but um, it, that was a team that, that had enough talent that we could have won it. I mean, we, we were really talented, and no one. I remember being at Buck Belcher Field, and I remember Will Bolt caught the last out uh, just up behind second base, uh, and the I remember you guys running around the outfield fence after the game. Uh, that, to me, was one of the biggest moments in Husker baseball history. Uh, what do you remember about that June day at Buck Belzer? Yeah, it, it still gives me the chills just hearing you describe it and everything. I mean, it, it, it was. It was really cool. It was really special. I think for me as an Omaha kid, I, I grew up watching the College World Series, and that was, that was, for me, more of a dream than – than playing professional baseball or anything like that. So, yeah, when when uh, Bolt made that last out and uh, caught the last out and and uh, dog piling and then like you said, run running around taking the victory lap and um, high five and all the fans and that kind of stuff because our fans were the support we had was absolutely incredible uh, and still is. Nebraska fans are are certainly I know everybody says their fans are the best, but Nebraska fans are easily some of the best in the country. Uh, so it was it was special. It was fun. Like you said, I think it, it kind of put Nebraska on the map and, and definitely one of the top moments in Nebraska baseball history. Well, growing up in Omaha, I know you went to a lot of College World Series games at Rosenblatt Stadium. But to enter that stadium, I remember you guys, the bus would drop you off and there'd be a line of fans from the bus all the way to the entrance to Rosenblatt Stadium uh, the reception that you got had to give you chills just entering that stadium and, and the crowd uh, on that June day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it was. It, it did, and it gave you chills, and it was, like I said, the fan support was was amazing, and, and the College World Series always draws well, right? And and fans support that regardless of who's in it, but it, it was it was a different level of excitement, different level of buzz, um, and, and yeah, like I said, growing up in Omaha, going to games in Omaha, uh, at the college world series to be able to have the opportunity to play in it. Um, and again, and, and then we came back in Oh two and played in it. And it's funny. So we were Oh, and two both years. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think in those four games, we lost by combined five runs. There were, there were three, one run losses and a two run loss. So, um, I mean, and I, I would say the O2 team wasn't quite as talented as the O1 team. Uh, we, we, uh, yeah, it was a good team, but probably not quite as talented, but, but we were right there. Uh, and like I said, we played, played hard, just not enough to get over the hump. Well, your best season at Nebraska was 2002. You set a school record that still stands today, 109 hits for a season. You also have the record for the boasted bats. Uh, what, what clicked and you're a first team all American, what clicked in 2002, how much better did you become? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I think some of it, again, we had such a good lineup, both of those years. I was fortunate that, you know, being a leadoff hitter, sometimes two hole, uh, I feel like I wasn't like the guy in the lineup that people were worried about. You know, you, it's like you pitched probably a little bit more to me because you, you had to be careful with the, the guys hitting behind me. Uh, so I think I definitely benefited from that um, and just having some really, really good lineups. Uh, I think another thing for me that ironically probably helped is, so I, in, in regionals, my sophomore year, I tore my shoulder diving into a base. I, I tore some muscles in my shoulder and, uh, or ligaments in my shoulder and um, had to have surgery in the off season. And same kind of thing. It's like I, I played and played well as a sophomore, but had some new guys coming in. There were some returners. And it's like, I got to make sure again that I'm, I'm still in the lineup as a junior. And, uh, and so 
I really focused on lower body stuff and, and kind of controlling the stuff I could control. I, I couldn't lift much upper body for a while. Uh, but so I just hammered like my legs and core and that kind of thing. I think it really helped just my strength and helped my power numbers and, and that kind of thing. Um, just from that lower body strength and base. Uh, so, so I think that certainly helped. And then just had time to focus on approach and, and continue to work and get better. Jeff, I know your offensive numbers are impressive and everything, but I truly remember your defensive play and your hustle uh, on defense. Uh, how much pride did you take in that? Yeah, I took a lot of pride defensively. You know, one thing I tell people this story too that that saw my sophomore year, I was I played center field for the most part, and I was the slowest guy in our outfield. <laughs> I mean, we we had Stern. Stern and right field, usually in Cole and left field, uh, two Canadians on, on the corners. And, and those two could absolutely fly. I mean, no, no question, they're much faster than I am. Um, and, and that's pretty rare, right, to have your, your center fielder be your slowest guy in the outfield. Uh, but but it's some, I was aggressive in the outfield. And I know even at a young age, I remember making an all-star team when I was little, you know, probably nine years old or something. And, and up until that point, I had played mostly first base. And my dad put me in the outfield. He, he coached this all-star team and, and put me in the outfield. And I remember like being in tears and being like, I don't want to play the outfield, you know, like outfield <laughs> where the kids go that, that can't play. And my dad telling me like, you're left-handed, you're small, you know, you're going to be small, you run well, like you're going to play the outfield. So, you, you, you know, you might as well start playing it and get used to it. And, and honestly, I mean, that, that was, I think huge for me because I played, you know, a lot of, college outfielders probably start out as infielders and then they end up moving out there. Um, but I played it from a young age and, and that's all I played from really a young age. And so I, I think it helped me again, get aggressive and, and be a good defensive outfielder. Well, you wrap up your college career in 2003, you got a new head coach, Mike Anderson takes over your senior year. Uh, what difference did that make? Cause I know coach Van Horde headed down to Arkansas as alma mater, uh, was that a, uh, a big transition when, uh, coach Anderson took over? Yeah. I mean, not really D- a little bit different styles and that kind of thing. Oh, oh three. We had a good year. Uh, we won the conference, um, in Oh three, but then just kind of fell flat in regionals. We lost, uh, at the time it was, uh, what Southwest Missouri state. I think they're Missouri state now. Uh, but that, that Southwest Missouri state team was really good and had a lot of pro guys on it. Um, so it, it, they were, I think they underachieved a little bit during the regular season, um, and then got hot in the postseason, and they knocked us off in regionals. But, uh, yeah, that, that O three team was really good. We still had, like I said, Anderson became the head coach, Rob Childress, as everybody knows, um, was still the pitching coach. So sure. not a lot changed, um, between those years. And, and again, then you fast forward to 05, I wasn't part of the 05 team, but that's, you know, I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but that's the 05 team is the best Nebraska team. Right. And, and there was a ton of talent on that team. And obviously that was coached by, by Anderson and Childress as well. And uh, they did a great job. Yeah. I talked to Brian the other day, we were talking about, it's not many teams that you have three major leaguers uh, who played about 10 years in the majors on one team with uh, Jabba, Alex Gordon, and of course, Brian Dunsing. Uh, and, and, then, and then Tony Watson was on that team well, too. Yeah, too. Yeah, the, yeah, and he's and he's still pitching. <laughs> hey, uh, you have uh, been a witness to this amazing Big Ten championship season, and this is really Will's first really full season. Uh, what difference has it made with Will Bolt as head coach of this baseball team? to achieve a big 10 championship so early in his career. Yeah, I think it's huge. And, and Erstad, I tell you, Erstad did a good job, right? It's not, I never want to make it sound like Erstad didn't do a good job at Nebraska. He did a good job as a head coach. Uh, I think will bring some in- intensity, some fire. Uh, he, he is super competitive. Uh, and I've been really impressed at just the, the roster turnover, the guys they've brought in. It would have been easy, you know, in the COVID year to to make excuses or feel sorry for yourself and and that kind of thing. And they got after it and, and brought in some talented, some talented and competitive kids. Um, I really I love watching how they play. 
Um, they've, they've got their hands full and they're in a tough regional this weekend at, at Arkansas. But uh, again, they're, they're a very fun team to watch and they compete. And, and um, again, Coach Bolt and his whole staff has, has really done a, a great job in, in a short amount of time. Why there's a lot of standouts on that team, some freshmen. Uh, you've got some guys that have dual roles. Uh, any players stand out to you that kind of like this guy's amazing? He could have played on that when I was in college. And yeah, there, there's started. definitely, yeah, there's definitely a handful that could have played on our teams. I mean, Schwellenbach, you know, is the first name that comes to mind, right? He, he could play a position in pro ball or he could be a pitcher and, and he'll probably get the chance to do both. My guess is he ends up as a pitcher. Um, I mean, he's got an unbelievable electric arm and, and stuff mm-hmm. on the mound. Um, Cade Povich on Friday nights has done a great job. I think, you know, some of the Nebraska teams have struggled over the last 15 years, you know, haven't have, have lacked, I guess, that Friday night arm and a true shutdown arm. Uh, so it's huge to have that in college baseball, to have that number one guy that you could throw out there and, and the team feels super confident going in that, okay, we're going to win on Friday. Right. And, and so that's huge. Jeb Povich on the front end on the mound um, offensively. Like I love Jackson Hallmark. He's fun, fun player to watch and, and fiery guy, super competitive, great team leader, that kind of thing. Um, it's been fun. I mean, Luke Roscom is a guy that I felt like I, I like the swing. I, I like the potential. Uh, and it's been fun to see him, I guess, break out a little bit in his senior year this year. Max Anderson is a freshman. Bryce Matthews, those two freshmen uh, are going to have outstanding careers at, at Nebraska. And like you said, I mean, they, they they have some veteran leadership and they have some young talent as well that can really play. Well, you've also got another job uh, as a broadcaster for NET, and you've been the doing the color commentating along with the play-by-play announcer, Larry Putney. What What's it like uh, broadcasting behind the microphone? Do you enjoy it? I actually do. I love it. I love it. Uh, you know, the, my favorite part of doing it, each week before the game, we'll have about a half hour conversation with the head coaches from each team. And, and I love those conversations, you know, and just being able to talk baseball, learn about their guys, uh, just, you know, just, just catch up with the coaches. And, and like I said, talking baseball um, is really fun. And, and again, yeah, so I've been doing games for NET and then also the Big Ten Network and, and uh, just, Loving it. I don't know where it'll go or what it'll lead to or or if anything, it doesn't doesn't really matter to me. I like I said, I'm just having fun doing it and uh get to call baseball and, and watch baseball. Well, it's neat seeing you and Kyle Peterson, two Omaha Creighton prep guys doing broadcasts. That's kind of neat. Yeah, and then and then Kevin Wheeler's a guy I played with that went to Kansas and played baseball at Kansas, and he does some for ESPN does I can't I know KU games, I don't know what all he's doing, but yeah, Kyle's uh, Kyle's definitely the the big fish in that pond, and and he he's he does a fantastic job. He's really really good. Um, I like listening to him and and the job he does. But yeah, he's uh, he's definitely one of the best. Uh, Jeff, kind of tell everybody what you're up to now. I know you're uh, helping a lot of young kids uh, play baseball, and you know getting that avenue to college baseball. Why don't you tell our viewers what you're doing now? Yeah, so. Well, first and foremost, I'm in real estate. That's that's the career, and we'll put food <laughs> on the table here. So, uh, so real estate's kind of the, the primary thing. But yeah, I do some baseball instruction, um, hitting lessons here in, in Omaha, and do that kind of thing, and then help run the Nebraska Prospects organization, which is um, a high school. It's for high school players that, I mean, pretty much all of them are are looking to go on and play in college, and so helping get them exposure and and develop them and and working just to get, get them out there. And it, it's an organization that's really grown over the last five or six years. And uh, we have some, a, a lot of talent. There's a ton of talent in the state of Nebraska. And it's been fun to, to get these guys out here and, and, and compete on a national level and uh, get exposure on a national level. Well, the College World Series is coming up. We're broadcasting this podcast early in June, but I know you'd love to see the Huskers get there. How excited are you to have the College World Series with a full capacity crowd back in Omaha later this month? Yeah, I love it. It's like things are finally getting back to normal, right? And we're able to do some of the things we enjoy doing. Uh, I love love that, like I said, full capacity crowd. And and uh, College World Series is always a great time in Omaha. I tell people, if, even if you're not a baseball fan, 
if you're going to come to Omaha, come during the College World Series, and, and it's just a fun atmosphere, fun city at the time, and and I, I'm super excited, like I said, to have fans and fans in the stands and uh, be able to watch some good baseball. Hopefully, hopefully Nebraska's playing in it. If they're not, if they're not, then, then I got to go Arkansas, right? Got to root for Arkansas yeah. if Nebraska doesn't make it. Okay. Well, this podcast today is produced by the Nebraska Greats Foundation. If you are or know of a former collegiate athlete from any of the 16 four-year colleges or universities in Nebraska who has a medical need or a financial challenge, please refer them to www.anygreats.org. Again, our guest today was former Husker All-American Jeff Lisey. Jeff, thanks for joining us on the Nebraska Greats Foundation podcast. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Again, just great, great foundation. Please support it. Do what you can. All right. Thanks a lot, Jeff Lisey. We'll see you next time on the Nebraska Greats Foundation podcast. This has been Nebraska Greats, a weekly podcast serving the Nebraska Greats Foundation. You can find each episode on Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Play, and anywhere you get your podcasts. Please give generously to serve Nebraska's former sports heroes in need at anygreats.org. And be sure to follow the Any Greats on Facebook and Twitter.